for those people that don't know, I've learned something today. Malacca is another name for a wanker, is that correct? Yes, it is. <laughs> That's good research, Bevo. <laughs> That's right, you got straight to the point, didn't yeah, you? I did. Well, what an absolute pleasure it is to have George Capinaris on Comedy Legends with Bevo. Thanks, Bevo. It's good to be here in person instead of, you know, Zooming oh, during lockdown. <laughs> I get to see you. Likewise. It was, it was it was great fun chatting to you last time, but uh, yeah. certainly better circumstances now, that's no, for sure, No, definitely mate. better, you know. I think this is the first time I've been in Adelaide since it all happened. Phenomenal. In fact, I was doing the comedy, I was doing the Fringe Festival and I was doing the Drama Llama Room here at the Rhino and that's when all hell broke loose and things just started crumbling, you know? And so, you know, first was there was no toilet paper at IGA and then <laughs> yeah. there was, you know, then all this stuff started happening while I was still here. Oh, it's been an unbelievable My wife was years. saying, bring toilet paper. We're out of toilet paper in Melbourne when you come home. And I was like, no, there's none here either. I still don't get that. Honestly, like, you can't eat toilet paper. I, yeah, I'm really, and I, hand sanitizer. You couldn't find hand sanitizer. People were making their own. Hand sanitizer. <laughs> oh, the things that you know empty on the shelves. Yeah. Toilet paper, hand sanitizer. Yeah, it was pasta and pasta sauce. Yeah, yeah, and rice. And rice was yeah. all gone. And flour and sugar. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. All the things that I guess you can use to bake cakes when you're yeah, bored. I guess. So, yeah, I guess. I guess, but it's bizarre. All of it? I know, <laughs> but we better get to your show because that's, yeah, that's right. absolutely awesome for you know the first time in four years we've actually been able to do a solo show, which is just phenomenal. And Malaka Rama, what a great name! Tell well, the about... last show before that was uh, Malakas with Attitude. <laughs> yep. So I just thought, you know, it's almost like a brand, so I might as well do a larger version of the Malaka show. So Malaka Rama is in Panorama or something, yep. Pandemic Rama. I'm calling it the Malaka variant, the show, because <laughs> it's kind of what I'm talking about, all the Mal Malaka stuff that's been happening over the last two years, you know, and how, how it affects me, but all of us really. Absolutely, and, and Malaka, for those people that don't know, I've learned something today, Malaka is another name for a wanker, is that correct? Yes, it is. <laughs> That's good research, Bevo. <laughs> That's right. You got straight to the point, didn't yeah, you? I did, yeah. So the word malako means soft in, in Greek. So a malaka that is someone that has a very soft argument or a soft penis and needs to give it a little bit of help. <laughs> needs to toughen up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, needs to toughen up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, obviously we spoke about it before. The last couple of years have been tough. And um, how did you actually spend your lockdown? Uh, we, we did a Zoom and so you've been doing lots of Zooms, I presume, and a uh, bit, of, bit of guitar as well. I wasn't well. very good at Zooms. I hated Zooms. And a lot of people <laughs> asked me to do stand-up comedy via Zoom. Yeah. It was just the worst thing. And then there was an offer in Adelaide. Someone wanted me to do a a Zoom show for their clients and they offered me, you know, three and a half grand to do it. So I went, here I go, I'm doing it. All right, <laughs> I'm going to do it. You can't knock back that money. Absolutely. So I did this Zoom. I, I couldn't hear them. I couldn't see them. So I was just doing my lines, pausing after every joke. Obviously the feed, it was in a similar situation here in like a studio. Yeah. But I just couldn't. So I just did a 30 minute routine with pauses after every, what I thought was a joke. And uh, and that was that was it. That was Zoom yes. comedy. It was terrible. Yeah, was that terrible. would that'd be really tough. Because none, the, the, the yeah. half of live comedy is you know the, love the audience, having an audience there, and the laughter, and you know, and that and that sort of pumps you up for the next joke or the yeah. next bit of the show. And if you don't have that, it's kind of pointless. It's like just doing radio. Exactly. And you want to have that you know the audience interaction, a bit of banter, some hecklers. And... Yeah. And that was that's what was great about doing you know uh, before I did um, Acropolis Now, which was a a sitcom that I did back in the in the eighties and nineties. I did the Flying Doctors, which was a TV series. Great show! I used to watch so, it as a kid. Flying yeah. Doctors, huge yeah. all around the world. Yeah. And um, the thing is, you did a take, and that was it. It was the end of the take, and you had to wait until the show was shown on on TV. Then, because we didn't have you know like cable TV or you know pick whatever we wanted to, so um, you'd have to wait for the episode to come on. You know, Channel Nine, seven thirty. You know, on a Thursday night to see how good you were until you had no idea. But at least with the, uh, the sitcom, you heard the instant reaction from the crowd and that was enough to tell you that the scene was good or the, the joke was good. And you mentioned Acropolis now. I was going to ask you about that. Uh, obviously that and you know, Wogs Out of Work, two really big shows you're involved in as well and, yeah. and Households and Fat Pizza, the list goes on. But um, what do you think made Acropolis now such a popular show and so successful? I think at, at its time, it was just the right time for it. And, you know, even with Wogs Out of Work and even before them when I first started. So I've been in comedy for 35 years. 
So 35 years ago was when Neighbours was on. You know, Neighbours just finished 37 years later. Yeah. So when Neighbours was on, all the characters in Neighbours were Anglo characters, you know. They were all blondes and ginger and, you know. So there, were, there wasn't one ethnic character or one wog, as we called them, <laughs> in Neighbours. So my audience or my cult audience had no one to relate to. And we started doing shows and talking about what it was like growing up in an ethnic household rather than an Aussie you know, with the Greek barbecue as compared to the Aussie barbecue, people were going, well, yeah, that's us too. And they're the type of jokes we tell at home around the dinner table and when we have a laugh. And then we started getting a following. Then I, of course, I was studying drama at the time. Straight after drama school, I did a show called The Tobaldi Brothers, which is a, a comedy duo of Simon Palomaris, who's Spanish. And myself, we're doing these, these kind of dubious Italian characters, you know, little mafia, comedy mafias are going around selling test tube babies to people because uh, IVF had just started around then there too and uh, we were quite popular and then Simon and I were approached by Nick Giannopoulos to do a stage show and we were about to do it all together and then I got the offer from the Flying Doctors to be a regular on the show so I left they became famous <laughs> with their, their their show was a hit so it went from a 100 seater to a 400 seater to an 800 seater and then later on I came back as a sub, you know, a wog sub. So if one couldn't do the show, that I'd come in and fill in because uh, they felt like I was part of the team, even though I wasn't part of the team. So while we were doing all that, Crawford's then who'd worked with me for three years on The Flying Doctor said, hey, you work with those guys that are doing really well in that show. Why don't you do a TV sh show together? Why don't you do a, like an ethnic comedy company? Because at the time, Con the Fruiterer, oh, Mark Mitchell, brilliant. that show, yeah. you know, all those characters. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Colin, Colin, Carp Colin, yeah. Colin Carpner was on it, yeah. Russell Gilbert with the Posty, you know, <laughs> were on this show and they wanted an ethnic version. And we said, hey, let's not do that, but why don't we do a sitcom like Happy Days or Cheers, something like that, you know, and base it in like a, a Greek restaurant, you know, and then one character could be like a yuppie and the other one could be like a, you know, petrol head and the other one could be like a traditional over the seas, you know, New Australian. And they went, right, okay, go away and write it for us. And we went, hang on, hang on, we just started in the business. How do we, we, we've got no idea how to write for TV. They said, don't worry, we'll give you the best. They gave us Andrew Knight, he's like a famous script writer. And he was our story editor. And we came up with the first episode of Acropolis Now. And from there, in fact, the first episode was a bit of a dud because the, the guy we used was a, an old Serbian guy. He wasn't really, an, he was sort of like a part-time actor. So we reshot his scenes with Warren Mitchell from the UK. Now, Warren Mitchell was a very famous actor in around the world, but from the UK. He was the guy, Alf, Alf Garner, the, the, the West Ham supporter. Did you ever see, you I know who I'm talking about? No. He was no. very English and very, you know, <laughs> controversial. <laughs> stuff them all and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So we got him and he played a really good Greek. Oh. who's fantastic in the role. And um, that was our pilot. And we uh, took it to Channel 7 and uh, they loved it. And we had five series of uh, Acropolis Now, 63 episodes. It's phenomenal. And how'd you go from being like a serious guy on Flying Doctors to being, you know, funny man on Acropolis Now? Well, I was kind of the through? funny guy on, on the Flying Doctors. I wasn't a serious guy on the Flying Doctors. I was a comic relief sort of guy. But okay. I was, I was the first ethnic in the business probably, you know, because <laughs> they wanted me to play an Italian character. And I said, look, I'm Greek. Why don't I play a Greek character? You know, <laughs> you want a character called DJ. They wanted this radio operator. It was before mobile ph phones, you know. So this guy on the CB radio that used to talk to the flying doctor, you know, aeroplane. So they called him DJ. So his name was like Dominic Giustino. I said, why don't we call him Dimitri Joannides? <laughs> they went, we love it. All right. <laughs> You can be Dimitri. The funny thing is, the character that I played in Acropolis now was called Mimo. And the word Mimo yeah. comes from the word Dominic. So I ended up playing a Dominic anyway. Oh, that's hilarious. Which is pretty funny. So, um, yeah, and that's how it all, all started. And, and how's those and Fat Pete's, we were speaking about this off air and we're seeing, you know, Paulie Fennick at the moment on SAS doing great things and yeah, love, yeah. love how he goes about it. He's know. a fighter, that guy. It's he a really perfect is. show for him. Yeah. You know, he, he won't back down from everything. And I think he was uh, an Army Reserve when he was younger. He was in the Army Reserves. How can you mention that? Yeah. I think I saw something the other day, but he is a battler, you know. And he's, he's a fitness fanatic. He boxes, he runs, he's, uh, you know, I think he's got 
you know, what's, 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 what do they call it now? Attention AD, ADHD or something. Attention deficit syndrome or yeah, something. Yeah, I think he's got yeah. something like that because yeah. he doesn't sit still. With, with his Fat Pizza shows, he writes, he produces, he edits, he does the sound, the filming, the, the acting. He, he does everything. That's amazing. Gets the props. You know, yeah. does the stunt. You know, if the actor can't do the stunt, he goes in and does it for him. That is amazing. He's yeah. just hands-on the whole time. And, He's and just brilliant. You, you must really enjoy being involved in that as well. Yeah, so I met him. He did a, a series called Aussie Jokers where he interviewed a whole bunch of comedians, including, I think, Tim Minchin, um, Joe Avadi, Tahir, a lot of, you know, Akmal, a lot of my my peers, and, 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 and uh, Ostentatious. He was a famous comic from the, the 80s. And each, each comedian had an episode, you know, it was based on them, uh, following them around from gig to gig and, and just in their environment or taking them to the country of their origin. So, uh, and I, I was the host of the show. So he's, he's got a uh, real soft spot for me too, which is great. So uh, he already had um, a character called Ronald McDougall. But I didn't think uh, that character worked as well as he wanted it to work. So then he got me to be the Ronald McDonald, Ronald McDoggle character in the film. And that's after we, he cast me because he, he did a live version of Fat Pizza at the Edmore Theatre. Uh, it was a live production. So all those stunts, I had to do a fighting scene with him on wires hanging off the Enmore oh. Theatre. I think I broke my finger too, oh, but I didn't want to admit it, you know. <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't choreographed. We just swung into each other and just kicked the shit out of each other as we went by. And we practised this scene, and then he put that scene in the movie, which is the scene where I get a, you know, we have a car crash, and I was, I've gone, look what you've done to my car, you <laughs> m- it. <laughs> and then he kicks me straight in the McNuggets, and since then my character, Mc- Ronnie McDougall, has wanted to cut off his McNuggets. <laughs> That's which brilliant. I think I did in the last series. They cut out of that scene before I could find out. Oh, it's so good. I love that pizza and how those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the movie as well. Just but yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he's been using me for those and, you know, he still uses me, which is fantastic. I'm curious as well, like, um, you've got young kids yourself. Um, you know, what's their reaction to it? Like when, when they see Dad on TV and, you know, their, their schoolmates and stuff when they, like, say, oh. Yeah, they're not interested in Acropolis now at all. They just don't get it. I don't get it. And their, their, their schoolmates are going, you've got to watch your dad, he's so funny. But then I got them with Fat Pizza as more their level, <laughs> you know, down in the gutter. <laughs> so they love sneaking, you know, past mum and seeing episodes of Fat Pizza, you know, because it's also, it's not only funny, but it's a bit rude as well. So uh, they, loved, they loved watching Fat Pizza, you know, because they, they knew they, they weren't supposed to be watching it. So they kind of loved that. But uh, dad's dad around the house, you know, Dad's grumpy. He's not funny around the house. Oh, so there's a different side to George. There's a different side. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you have to be, you know, you have to get, you know, when your son comes up to you going, Dad, why are you so mad? You're supposed to be a comedian. <laughs> you know, there's no authority there. You need to. Yeah. Otherwise they'll walk all over you. Yeah, they walk yeah. all over you. So you need to kind of fake it a little bit. Yeah. And 35 years of stand-up's a very long time, George, but um, yeah. you know, take us back to where you got that first real interest in, in comedy, where that came from. Was there someone on TV that you idolised growing up? Or Look, I've always been a bit of a comedian, you know, always done drama at school, uh, never wanted to be a stand-up comedian, uh, but I did look up to Robin Williams and I always wanted to be Mork for Mork and I always wanted to do stand like, like Robin and, and be a film actor in movies where I could be funny and sad. But uh, when I finished my course at, at Rusden, I was supposed to become a drama teacher. And at Rusden, I met Simon Palomares, who was in Acropolis now, who's Ricky. And um, he said, hey, why don't we do some tryouts together? You know, just for a bit of extra cash. He'd already done some stand-up. So I, I hadn't even been to a comedy venue. I'd, saw, I'd seen Eddie Murphy and Richard Pryor on TV, but I'd never been to a comedy venue. So my first experience at a comedy venue was after I'd finished high school. Or I'm sorry, after I'd finished university. Not high school, university. So I was 22. And then I walked into a venue, sort of like the Rhino Room, called Le Joke and The Last Laugh, and I was blown away. And then I watched the show and it was Wendy Harmer and Richard Stubbs and uh, Shane, uh, Shane Vaughan and um, David Cotter 
was people like this, Uncle Arthur Glenn. Glenn Robbins. Glenn yeah, Robbins. Yeah, yeah. And I was just blown away. This is amazing. And that's when I started getting interested. I still am not, I don't see myself as a stand-up comedian, even though I make a living out of it. I still don't see myself as a serious stand-up comedian like all the other guys that do the Rhino Room. I don't have the passion to be the best stand-up comedian. I just do it. You know, I just do it. Yeah, and you do it bloody well, obviously. 35 years. Yeah, I guess. It, so, yeah. I guess. There's got to be something there. <laughs> exactly. And outside of outside of comedy, you play guitar as well. Um, do you have any yeah. other interests? Outside? I play guitar in the show as well. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. we're doing a show at, uh, called Lockdown the Musical. Yeah, or I do a bit in the show called Lockdown the Musical, but it's just a thing I wrote with a mate of mine, Gab Rossi. And uh, this week, on Saturday, we're doing a show in Goolwa at Centenary Hall near Victor Harbour. Oh, beautiful part of the world. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And we're doing, uh, this is the second time we've been there, so we're doing a night at the Wapra at the Centenary Hall. And that's a great show. It's filled with not only comedy, but music as well. So Wonderful. And Gab's getting up with me at the Rhino Room on uh, Friday night to do the Lockdown the Musical with me. So I'm looking forward to that too. And what else have you got happening this year as well, George? Obviously, it's great to be doing live shows again. So. Yeah, so I'm touring, um, finishing here, um, the Fringe, and then I, uh, I get back to doing uh, the Crazy Rich Ethnic tour with myself, uh, Tahir, who's here doing shows as well. Funny man. Uh, yep. Gluttony, very funny man. <laughs> and magician as well. Shit, shit magician, he calls himself. <laughs> he does a shit comedy show. But it's really funny. Um, and, um, and a guy called James Liotta who everyone might know from the Pippo and Pasquale shows. So uh, the three of us are doing a thing called Crazy Rich Ethnics. And we're, we're here in uh, Adelaide. Uh, I think it's uh, June the 25th. Beautiful. We're doing two shows in one, one, one night. So yeah, come along to that. Yeah. It's a great show too. And, and George also do some MCing, which again, it's, it's really great that you sort of get, because comedians out of anyone, I well, know everyone's been doing it really tough the last few years, but comedians and musicians have done it tougher the most because of you know all your shows being cancelled and we've spoke yeah, about this yeah. on zoom a couple of years ago and we chatted you know you do a bit of emceeing as well yeah, so. you do a bit of emceeing especially wedding emceeing and that's that's a lot of fun and you get to try out some stuff that you've all written or you know you can do some older stuff if you want because it's not a comedy crowd it's a it's a mainstream crowd it's great and the pay's fantastic so you know i'm there for you if you want me yeah and how do uh, we book you well, every, the reason I started up doing it was, again, people were approaching me because of Facebook and Instagram and all the different social media platforms. They were just coming to me and going, hey, do you do weddings? I was like, yeah, I can do your wedding. <laughs> yeah, well, can you do, uh, you know, my wedding in Sydney on the 24th of September? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's that easy, you know. You don't even have to go through an agent. People come to you. Yeah, beautiful. But it's uh, georgecapignaris.com.au, your website, is that correct? Yeah, georgecapignaris.com uh, .com. is yeah. my website. Or you can go to my Facebook page. Again, it's George Capignaris Productions or George Capignaris. And just send me a, a text or a, a message and um, I'll call you back. I'm sure they'd be uh, extremely lucky to have you as their MC yeah. for, for the it's wedding. it's a lot of fun. I, yeah. love, I love doing it, yeah. Yeah. Well, George Capignaris, thanks so much for joining us today on Comedy Legends with Bevo. Thank you, um, Bevo. It's really great to meet you in person after the chats um, on Zoom a couple of years ago. And uh, all the very best for, for this coming Fringe and also the rest of the year. Thank you so much and uh, keep up the good work.